Hey, want to see my mighty pirate scrapbook? It's filled with my adventures. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a mighty pirate. That's me, Guybrush Threepwood. In the old days, you became a pirate by completing three trials to prove your worth. Treasure hunting is important for any pirate. Mastering sword fighting was more a matter of wits than agility. The test of thievery involved breaking into the governor's mansion. The security was heavy. The pirate leaders were in charge of the three trials, acting as judge, jury, executioner, and devoted grog tasters. This is when I met Elaine, the love of my life. She was governor at the time. Things took an unexpected turn while I was working on the three trials. My first ship was the Sea Monkey. I bought it at Stan's used ships with a letter of credit that I, um, sort of falsified. My first ship was the Sea Monkey. LeChuck thought he was in love with Elaine. Elaine was kidnapped and taken to Monkey Island by the nefarious ghost pirate LeChuck. I scraped together a crew. Carla, Otis, and Meat Hook joined me on my voyage to Monkey Island to save Elaine. I scraped together a crew. Carla, Otis, and Meat Hook joined me on my voyage to Monkey Island to save Elaine. Monkey Island was a steaming volcanic mystery, covered with jungle and not found on any map. You had to brew a special potion just to find Monkey Island. I made some substitutions, but it got us there just the same. There were some people living there who claimed to be cannibals, but I think it was just a show for the tourists. The monkey head opened with a special key that you stuck in its ear. I met an old castaway there, Herman Toothrot. He and the locals wrote a lot of indignant letters to each other. On the island was a gigantic monkey head statue with hidden catacombs underneath. LeChuck's ghostly ship was anchored in a lake of lava hidden beneath the island's surface. We wound up back on Melee Island for the stunning conclusion to my first big adventure. I made it to the church just in time to stop the wedding. Or so I thought. It turned out Elaine already had everything under control. How does she do that? By then, I had learned that ghosts like LeChuck are vulnerable to root beer. It just trust me, it works, okay? I defeated LeChuck, and he basically exploded. It was the beginning of something magical. Uh, these are from the time I went to find the treasure of Big Whoop. I met my good friend Wally, who makes maps, and I stole his monocle. Good times. The map to the treasure had been torn into four pieces, which, let's face it, is about as piratey as it gets. Elaine always seems to know when I need her. The mysterious voodoo lady at the International House of Mojo taught me to make a voodoo doll, which came in handy more than once. Again, it came down to just me and LeChuck at the end. He was using magic, but then, so was I. One time, Elaine got turned into a statue. Well, LeChuck was behind it, of course. That guy never gives up. The fact that he turned her into a statue tells me LeChuck doesn't really love Elaine. He thinks of her as furniture. I got eaten by a snake. I got buried alive. I erupted a volcano on purpose. There's not a lot I wouldn't do for Elaine. It was around this time that I met Murray, the allegedly all-powerful demonic skull, after a rousing sea battle. Things backfired on LeChuck because Elaine and I got married when it was all over. Game. This was a great day. Though in retrospect, we shouldn't have had the scum bar handle the catering. I wrote a great haiku for the wedding invitation. I don't know why you have to have candy-coated almonds at a wedding, but apparently you do. That's either Elaine's wedding veil or my handkerchief. We got them to match. I wrote a great haiku for the wedding invitation. This is the daisy we stomped on together. The wedding traditions are weird. Oh man. This was that crazy time LeChuck teamed up with an Australian billionaire and tried to use a mystical talisman to make Elaine his bride. I made a goofy monster out of prosthetic body parts. It didn't help with anything, but I had fun doing it. Everything started because they thought Elaine was dead, so they held an election to replace her. LeChuck and I battled it out on a grand scale that time. LeChuck and I battled it out on a grand scale that time. The ultimate insult wasn't really ultimate, or even an insult at all. 
or was it? Then there was the time I accidentally let loose LeChuck's pox over the entire Caribbean, or so it seemed. I had to wear a hook for a while. It came in handy. The death card doesn't usually represent literal physical death, except when it does. I went on trial for my life on four separate charges. I defended myself, of course. Oh, here's that voodoo doll from the end of my Big Whoop adventure. I defeated the Chuck with this. His leg came off as easy as tearing a loaf of bread. Anything. Just put my leg back on. Hey, you kids. You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Let's goof on those two. Pretend they're our parents. <laughs> yeah! Sorry we ran off. You were probably worried about murderers and ne'er-do-wells. Don't worry. <laughs> I found him. <laughs> um, come on, let's go. Let's pretend I have powers that make lightning come out of my eyes. It's so lifelike. I wonder if it's real. Sorry, boys, could you stop following us? It's creepy. Sir. Come on! I saw a scurvy dog shack back there. Scurvy dogs! I've never had one of those! No way! You have to try one! It's the best thing you'll ever eat in your life! No bullet! Wow! What should we do next? We gotta get to scurvy dogs! I, I can't believe you never had one! What should we do next? We gotta get scurvy dogs. I, I can't believe you never had one. I once got a scurvy dog that was bigger than my head. They put it on a leg to keep you from walking off with it. <laughs> I should pick this up. I should pick this up. I should pick this up. I'll bring this right back, sir. You'd be wise to do that. I got the leg from the last kid who didn't bring back the key. It unlocks the outhouse outside. Some places you go have scurvy dogs with cheese inside. Those glasses are thicker than the layer of grease on the floor. <laughs> you kids better have money. Uh, yeah, we've got all kinds of money. Can we get a couple of scurvy dogs? Sure. If you give me a piece of eight, that's money that grown-ups use. I know what a piece of eight is. Good for you. You can have a couple of dogs if you give me one. Please? Can't you spare something for a couple of hungry kids? Listen up, you little moocher. Let me tell you something. I don't like kids. I'm an honest businessman trying to make an honest living. I don't need 50 kids a day coming in and wasting my time trying to get me to give them free food. I guess never mind. 
Hey, I know. Let's look for change in the outhouse across the way. Coins fall out of people's pockets when they sit down in there. How much are those chicken foot fries? Chicken foot fries are two pieces of eight. It's locked. Good thing I've got the key in my pocket. Good, you unlocked it. Ugh, what is this stuff? It smells the same as a toilet. It isn't a piece of eight, but it's a round piece of metal about the same size and shape as a piece of eight. That's called a slug. It's like a fake coin. A fake coin is almost as good as a real coin. Gross. Chucky, why don't you look in the toilet? No way. You do it. Okay. Ugh. Gross. I don't see any coins, and I'm not putting my hands in that. It looks like a piece of eight, if you don't see very well. Did you know you can keep a scurvy dog warm by sticking it in your armpit? Now what? Can we get a couple of scurvy dogs? Sure, if you give me a piece of eight. What can we get with this? Tastes like a piece of eight. Enough for a couple of scurvy dogs if you want. Perfect! Take them, boy. What are you getting? What? Just kidding. Here's yours. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner forever. What do you want to do now? I don't know. What do you want to do? I wonder where those two people we were following went. In France, they call a scurvy dog a chien scorpion. Hey, uh, Chucky, stand over here for a minute. No way. Exhibit removed. Aw. Let's not go back there again. We'll just get yelled at. I can stand on my head without using my hands. Smells like grog. Wakey, wakey, Mr. Pirate. Um, hello? Boo! Ha, ah, he's dead to the world. Ah, sounds real. Hey, Chucky, get ready to run. I guess they don't like visitors. Hey, look! I'm returning the key! You want a medal? Those glasses are thicker than the layer of grease on the floor. <laughs> I don't see very well, but I can hear just fine. That's my friend D. Hey D. Hey Chucky, what are you jerk faces up to? We just got here. I'm making a list of stuff to do. Give me that. I'm an expert planner. There. Perfect. See you around the park, Sid Heads. That's a 
cool anchor. <sighs> that just shows how little you know about anchors. This one's not a very good example. You'd know that if you read as much about anchors as I have. Did you know that anchors originally weren't designed to hold ships in place? They were used in combat, shot from cannons as a grapple when you were trying to board another ship. They started making them bigger and bigger because they would do more damage that way. Then people noticed what happened when you missed the other ship and hit the sea bottom instead. The current bow-shaped design is actually less effective than the sharper V-shaped design that was popular last century. But the older design went out of fashion after sailors started to think the letter V was bad luck. You can still find the old kind around sometimes, but collectors have grabbed most of them. On a modern anchor, if you look close, you can tell that one side is a little larger than the other. That's to prevent what's called plummeting, where the anchor goes down too evenly and then it doesn't catch well on the bottom. The little flanges at the tips are at different angles to make it twist on the way down for the same reason. Most anchors these days are made of iron, and you have to recast them like twice a year because they rust. About 30 years ago, somebody thought of a way to get around that by making them out of wood instead. All kinds of people invested a lot of money in these wooden anchor companies. But the only way they could keep them from floating was to attach another anchor. And so they gave up and went back to the old way. The word anchor comes from the Sanskrit word nagara, meaning city. They're called that because when you stop in the middle of the ocean, it's like you've made port at an invisible city. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of an expert on anchors. I read a lot. <laughs> I want to see two scurvy dogs at the same time. I wonder where this path goes. Hey, hands off! Excuse me? Yes? Could we have some of your bread to feed the duck? I don't think so. We brought it for ourselves. I have an extra tooth in the back. I can feel it with my tongue. Excuse me. Yes? Will you pretend to be our parents again? What do you mean, again? Run along and find your real parents. That's our bread! That's a nice tree. I'm only pretending to look at the tree. I'm actually spying on that couple by the pond. Don't feed the duck. I wonder where this path goes. Let's be frank. You can never hope to beat me. No way! You'll never catch up to my level. I win! I win! Uh -uh. <laughs> you guys are both pretty weak. Well, anyway, that was fun. Your sword is as sharp as a banana. I'll still pare you down to size. I for sure won that one. In your dreams? You fight like kids. You're about as scary as a bowl of oatmeal. I'll be sure to break you fast. I'm so the best at this. Almost as good as me. I've seen better footwork from a footstool. You fight like a doofus. Yeah, like a doofus, who's an amazing fighter, you mean. Okay, that was a good comeback. I know. You guys give new meaning to the term practice dummy. Let's be frank. You can never hope to beat me. I relish the opportunity, you scurvy dog. I for sure won that one. In your dreams. Your delivery is going to the wrong zip code. Four-leaf 
clovers. <laughs> As if. Let's look for a four-leaf clover. Okay. Good luck with that. I found one. Awesome. There was still one left. Darn. Do you like to hunt for four-leaf clovers? Yeah, I leave them where they are and take the extra leaves off. I want things to be even. I want to feed the duck. Did you know your feet won't smell if you don't wash them? to feed the duck. I'm saving this scurvy dog for myself. What's this red glob on the ground? That's ketchup. It's supposed to be really good with scurvy dogs. You're not gonna touch the ground with your scurvy dog. No, of course not. Gross. You should put that on your scurvy dog. I never thought I'd ever find one. I'm saving this scurvy dog for myself. I should throw my coin in and make a wish. I wish for another scurvy dog. Those things are bad for you. Whoa. Told you so. <laughs> <laughs> scurvy dog sticks that fills a whole shoebox. I wonder 
what's in that basket? Let's find out. What do you think you're doing? Kids these days, you have no regard for personal property. And no respect for your elders. I have half a mind to give you a piece of my mind. And I've got the other half. Gotta run! How rude. done here we might not be able to come back if we head this way I have an extra tooth in the back I can feel it with my tongue Chucky, wanna race? You're on. I'll officiate. Three, two, one, go! I win! <laughs> Did you know your feet won't smell if you don't wash them? Excuse me. Would you boys mind letting us enjoy our day in peace? Thanks. They call a scurvy dog a chien score butt. Hey, Dad. Hello, Mr. Threepwood. Hey, kids. Having fun? Yeah. We got scurvy dogs. Those have toenails and stuff in them. Ugh, I read about it. And we were playing your adventures. We just did Big Whoop. Big Whoop. Oh, boy. That takes me back. I like it when Chucky asked me to put his leg back on. He says it really funny. You guys always make up the craziest stuff for the ending of that story. It's fun. But you can't just change it around. That's not how storytelling works. A lot of your stories don't feel like they're finished at the end. What do you mean? Well, like, there's this one that you call The Secret of Monkey Island, where you went to Monkey Island and fought LeChuck. Oh, that story has a great ending. There's punching and fireworks. I thought you liked that one. But you never did find the secret. Not the real one. Sure, but that's not what that story was about. Kids, let me tell you a story that is about finding the secret of Monkey Island. Is this a long story? I think maybe I gotta go use the bathroom or something. Yeah, I have to go uh, walk my tarantula. Maybe I should go with them. No, no, stick around. This is a good one. See, there was a rumor going around that my old nemesis, LeChuck, had somehow discovered the exact location of the secret of Monkey Island. I knew I had to get it before he did, so I went to Melee to get my own expedition started and beat him to the punch. 